Hello, my name is Ray Salazar, and this is Morning Real, a three to four to 100 minute or so podcast of films that I review from the good, the bad, the ugly, the horrible, the wonderful, from Indonesia to America. Here I am reviewing them every Thursday morning. And today, happy Friday the 13th. Today I review Friday the 13th, the 1980 film version. Ooh, it's, an Amer- it's actually an American indie slasher film. You know why it's an indie slasher film? Because the budget was, at that time, I don't know about inflation and shit, but $550,000. $550,000. What can you do with half a million dollars, especially at that time? You know, what would you invest it in? Some guy's like, you know what? Let me invest it into my own shit. And guess what the box office numbers were? $59.8 million. I don't know if that's box office weekend or overall, but that is a lot of money. Directed by Sean S. Cunningham, written by Victor Miller, produced by Sean S. Cunningham, starring Betsy Palmer, Adrienne King, Harry Crosby, Laurie Bartram, Mark Nelson, Janine Taylor, Robbie Morgan, and Kevin Bacon. Cinematography by Barry Abrams, edited by... Bill Freda, music by Harry Manfredini. Distributed by Paramount, whoop whoop, in the United States, and Warner Brothers internationally. Hello. I'm going to keep this very fucking simple. This is a very iconic film. It has a very iconic franchise. I mean, they got Jason 10, or Jason X, where he goes to space, which I will review very, very soon for this month of October. Anyways, this one was very plain and simple. It show it spoon feeds us. This film spoon feeds us. It tells us what what we want to know, what we shouldn't have known, and it's messed up what we don't know, right? And not only that, even though it spoon feeds us ultimately, it doesn't show us who the killer is. It doesn't show us who's attacking who. We get a good sense of what it who could it be, but we really don't know until the end. And that's why I stuck with this film because I wanted to see the payoff, and there's a payoff. And it's actually a good payoff, even though this film was written not too well. Off the bat, I will give this film two out of four tokes. Yes, two. Why? There's really not that much of a plot. There's a story there. You got these teens or whatnot volunteering at Camp Crystal Lake to open it up. They're cleaning it up, and they notice some spooky shit happening, and they don't know what's going on. What's great about this film is really the death scenes, you know? You know? All kinds of, you know, cool ways to see how somebody dies. And it's so simple, too. You know, it's not over the top. I mean, Kevin Bacon's death, as we all know, is one of the most famous ones. And honestly, in that film in particular, it's it's pretty grimy. I mean, we see, like, other characters get their, like, get axed in the head. And you see it while you don't see the action. And that's what's cool, too. Like, we don't see the action. We don't actually see the impalement, you know. And it's crazy that we don't see the impalement for some because then there would be nothing else that this film could give us, you know. And I think the writer and the director, Sean S. Cunningham, kind of knows it, but he doesn't care. He wants to shock people. And that was the whole point. Roger Ebert, who's one of my favorite film critics of all time, did not like this movie. And he didn't like it because it was just too gory You know, it didn't make sense. I love the fact that it's gory. It kind of needs to be gory if it's a horror film or if it's a spooky film about fucking teens who volunteer at a, you know, at a lake that is known to be haunted and dangerous and everybody's telling them, telling them like, hey, don't go there, please. Stay away from there. But they don't care. They still go. That's just what it is. And that's just what it is with this film. They're kind of like NPCs. It's it's crazy. This film is like an NPC film where, like, the characters do what they got to do. There's not much character building, and the results are the results of that. But, yeah, two <laughs> out of four togs. I mean, even though it's two out of four, you should see this film. It's a very iconic film. It gives you what you want as far as jump scares, horror, blood. And, I mean, for a Halloween film... It's a great film to watch. It really is, you know. I don't really care about the actors as far as, like, the roles that they chose and what the film came out to be as far as, like, how these characters play themselves and all that. 
I mean, you should care, but I feel like these char- these people knew what they were getting themselves into as far as making this movie, of course. And sometimes I got to take it like that. Sometimes I don't, but I got to take it like that. There's just some films that were just made to, like, bust your balls a little bit, you know, make you laugh, to show the the ridiculousness of the film. This sounds like sort of like the first new wave of, like, slasher films, you know. It, I mean, 1980. That's so early in the in the horror film verse, you know. And obviously more films came about after this film, which some were more ridiculous than this. Some had, like, there's some depth to it, you know. But, yeah, Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th. Watch the 1980 version of Friday the 13th. You get to see how dumb it is, but <clears throat> you get to see the killings. You get to see the style of, like, horror genre of, like, you know, you get to see the tropes, all that stuff. Kevin Bacon's death, great. You get to see uh, an arrow being just stabbed from behind his neck or behind his chest area and boom, and impaled through. And, hey, man, whoever was killing him, because I'm not going to spoil who kills him, right? I mean, we all know by now, right? But this guy's or person is he's superhuman, dude, because... Like, Kevin Bacon's a man, you know, he's a teen man, you know, like, he's a teen dude. And you got this mysterious person just, like, fucking holding him while impaling the arrow through him. And it's like, any other person, I don't know, could have, like, just got out of there, you know. But, hey, it's, it's Friday the 13th. So, enjoy this day, enjoy this review, and go watch a lot of slasher films. Thank you.